I don't regard myself as an anti-wind person. I regard myself as a person for safe wind installation. And what I mean by that is where the wind turbines don't cause any health problems to people and or animals. In my professional opinion, most of the nuisance problems and, and health problems is primarily coming from the pressure pulsations in the infrasound range, which is very low hertz level noise. Probably hear it in kids' car stereos that they have nowadays with a very loud booming noise. Uh, that's in the infrasound range. And infrasound can be audible if the noise level is very high, uh, but what we're recording from the wind turbines is showing it to be, for the most part, in the inaudible range. So everybody's being vibrated by the pressure pulsations off the blades. Some people sense it and some people don't sense it at all. The nausea, vertigo, vibroacoustic disease, being awakened in the middle of the night, uh, not getting a good night's sleep, all these things I personally believe are associated with the pressure pulsations off the blades. I think the most significant thing with respect to animals for me is this uh, a family in Colorado that are continuing to lose many, many animals every year. They've lost uh, over 60 animals in just a three-year period. Her ducks have uh, lost vision. Uh, we b believe that's due to the vibration of the eyeball and eventually resulting in eye pressure that causes uh, their loss of sight. It's very typical in chickens. Uh, chickens will quit laying eggs, or if they do lay eggs, the shells will be extremely thin. And when farmers have taken their chickens off of the farm, away from the wind turbines, they will end up sleeping for like three or four days straight because they're not getting a good night's sleep. And so some of the animal deaths that we've seen, when they've been analyzed to determine why they died, it, it, that sometimes the vets come to the conclusion it was due to lack of sleep. I'm of the opinion that a lot of the animal deaths that we're seeing throughout the world are definitely related to the pulsations off the blade and those pulsations occur every time a blade is pointed vertically downward and then along with that first pressure pulsation are eight harmonic pressure pulsations that follow after that. Well, the most powerful thing for me was when I was researching, trying to figure out what the problem was. And the city and the county couldn't figure out what was causing this problem to this elderly couple. So my alderman contacted me and I said, well, okay, I'll look into it, see if I can figure it out. And there was audible noise at the home that was coming from a cooling tower, but it wasn't uh, a high level noise that would create a noise violation. I thought maybe perhaps it could be infrasound, so I was studying infrasound. I found research material that was suggesting that industrial wind turbines may be producing the same type of infrasound. And then I was contacted by a family in Denmark, Wisconsin, and I agreed to help them as well. So as I was researching these two families, trying to figure out if this might be infrasound, I got a doctor to donate his time so that we could compare the two families in the doctor's office, and the symptoms were very much the same. This was the first time these two families ever met each other. They wanted to learn more from each other, so they went to the house near the cooling tower and the family that lived near the wind turbines got so sick they couldn't stay there. So I convinced the town to hire an acoustician with experience in infrasound. We chose one, we tested both sites, and both sites had very significant pressure pulsations in the air. So that was kind of my aha moment when I finally thought, okay, I think I'm onto something here, and, and our acoustician proved it. Well, after the tests were conducted, we took it back to the, the t uh, city of Green Bay and we contacted the company that owned the cooling towers and the company refused to do anything and uh, because it didn't violate any codes because uh, there are no codes that I know of in any community in the United States for infrasound. So we took the issue to the Board of Health um, as well as the cooling tower, hoping that maybe 
we could get something done through the Board of Health because the state didn't want to do anything, which the board, after much research, had agreed with what we had found and declared the wind turbines uh, hazardous to human health. This is not an exclusive problem, just the wind turbines. We found other cases in the state, uh, one in Oshkosh with vibration off of a natural gas generator system, a wood boiler system in Stevens Point. It's common with any very large type of air moving type system. Uh, they can create these pressure pulsations to the point where it can become very irritating. The cooling tower industry admits that infrasound can be a problem if you're installing in a residential neighborhood. And so they highly recommend that if you're gonna build a cooling tower system in the middle of a residential neighborhood, you need to use cooling towers that produce very low levels of infrasound. But that's not the case with the wind turbine industry. The wind turbine industry still denies that these things are going on. Uh, but we know that they've tried different blade designs to try to get rid of the pressure pulsations, but um, they still deny that it's happening. Even though we have the test to prove that the wind turbines are producing this, these pressure pulsations are very significant from high pressure to low pressure to high pressure to low pressure. It's my opinion that we want to do something so badly about climate change that they're willing to look the other way. There are people that believe that, you know, if we can't have wind turbines, we're not going to achieve the goal of reducing CO2 emissions in hopes of getting climate change under control. And so there's a lot of people who will just look the other way. They view us as people who are anti-wind and uh, they want uh, wind turbines at any cost. We've had no success with our state. They are saying that there's a lack of evidence. And so without the state support, it's up to each community to take on the situation themselves. One of the ways is families could sue, but the problem with that, it's now become so expensive that they can't afford it anymore. We're talking about somewhere around 150 to $200,000 upfront plus 20% of the take. So then the only other solution is to appeal to their Board of Health. But the Board of Health, in, in many of these cases, may declare a nuisance or hazardous to human health, as we did here in Brown County. Then the next step is to get the director of the health department to agree and say, shut them down. Those directors are, in my opinion, getting a lot of pressure from the top people in the county not wanting to go into a lawsuit. So if the Board of Health tells the developer or the utility to shut them down, now you're in the middle of a very expensive court case. Some of the things that have happened is where utilities just kind of give in and say, okay, we'll buy your home. And then they eventually bulldoze the home and the family moves elsewhere. But there's been uh, very few of those types of settlements. But if there is a settlement, um, then there's a gag order attached to that settlement where the people are not allowed to talk about what the settlement was or even that there was a settlement. But usually the press eventually finds out, they see that the house has been evacuated and then eventually they get bulldozed because they don't want people living in those houses. But um, uh, in our state, uh, one of the things I've seen is the utility uh, utilities have totally gotten out of installing wind turbines. They don't want the personal liability. And so they let a developer install them and the utility then gets to claim their electricity as their own. And in Wisconsin, as in many other states, uh, they require the utilities to produce a certain percentage of their electricity from uh, renewables. The utilities who, in my opinion, really don't want to be installing renewable electricity because of its high cost, will at least meet the state requirements uh, that they are required to meet every single year. I have absolutely no doubt these nuisances and health problems are very real. 
I'm very concerned about the potential health outcomes of people due to some of the medical research that has already occurred at different universities uh, due to uh, collagen buildup in the body uh, causing the heart tissue to toughen up and the, the, the heart uh, then has to pump more frequently to supply the oxygen to the, to the body, causing fatty liver and things like that. Um, and then the stress that the people are under and the inability to get a good night's sleep, as I pointed out, animals dying due to the lack of sleep. Uh, I'm very concerned about the huge liability that's coming down the road, that once we get the medical evidence, there are going to be very large lawsuits I'm talking about could very easily be in the range of a million dollars per person that has been exposed. And I'm very concerned about that situation, but even more concerned about the people's inability to, to get the wind turbine shut down so they can have a healthy life. Instead, they live in exposure and not knowing what the outcome is going to be in the long run for them.